Bill Paxton, an actor who made his mark during the late 80s and stayed relevant through the years with hit films and shows such as Titanic, Twister, and Big Love, died of complications related to heart surgery on February 25, 2017. The actor was 61 at the time. Paxton often said his biggest asset as an actor was his everyman quality. The actor believed that while he did several lead roles that brought him fame and popularity, it was his character roles that allowed him to explore his acting potential and establish himself as an actor par excellence. A year after his untimely death, Bill Paxton's family filed a lawsuit against the Cedar sinai Medical Center alleging battery, negligence, and wrongful death. In this video, we tell you all about Bill Paxton's iconic career and his wrongful death. Bill Paxton was born to Mary Lou and John Lane Paxton on May 17, 1955, in Fort Worth, Texas. Other than being a museum executive and the head of the family's lumber business, John Paxton, Bill's father, was also fond of the arts. Therefore, Bill got early exposure to arts and cinema. This early brush with cinema led to Bill becoming interested in filmmaking. So after graduating from Arlington Heights High School in Fort Worth, Paxton decided to move to England to study arts and chose Richmond College. While there, Paxton met Tom Huckabee, and Paxton, along with his old friend Danny Martin and Huckabee, created several Super 8 short films. After completing his graduation, he moved to L.A. in the hopes of becoming a director. However, after facing several rejections, he decided to move his attention to acting. In 1975, he bagged his first film role in Crazy Mama, an action comedy film that not only marked the debut of Paxton, but also another supremely popular actor, Dennis Quaid. Bill had a minor role in the film. After doing some small work here and there, he decided to study acting. He chose to go to NYU primarily because he wanted to learn acting from Stella Adler, the American actress and acting teacher who founded the Stella Adler Studio of Acting. Even though Paxton was greatly inspired by Stella, he decided to quit acting school after only two years and return to L.A. In 1980, Paxton decided to go back to his first love, which was film direction. He directed a short film called Fish Heads. The film was shown on Saturday Night Live, an event that worked in Paxton's favor. In 1981, he got a small role in Stripes and got the opportunity to work alongside actors John Candy and Bill Murray. In 1982, he formed a music band called Martini Ranch with his friend Andrew Todd Rosenthal. Though the band kept the actor occupied, the members didn't release anything significant until 1988. In 1983, Paxton yet again did a small role in Lords of Discipline, and in 1984, he got a chance to work with James Cameron while working on The Terminator. In the film, Bill played a punk who's killed by The Terminator. Two years later, Bill worked with Cameron again on the science fiction action film Aliens. In 1985, Bill played the role of Chet Donnelly in the film Weird Science. This role was more prominent than anything Paxton had done until then. In Weird Science, Bill played the evil older brother of one of the film's protagonists. Bill finally got a chance to display his acting skills properly and leave audiences impressed. At this point, Bill Paxton's struggle had lasted almost a decade. Though things were turning around for him, they were not happening at a good pace. Bill had to struggle for another couple of years before getting his big break in 92. Do you want to know how life turned around for Bill Paxton? More importantly, do you want to know why Bill's family is suing his surgeon after the actor's death? In the next part, we'll get to Bill's iconic career and wrongful death. So don't go anywhere. Keep watching. Meanwhile, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. In 1992 came Bill Paxton's big break. He was offered the role of Dale Hurricane Dixon, a small-town lawman in pursuit of three criminals, in one false move. The film was a hit, especially with critics who had only good things to say. More importantly, though the film also starred Billy Bob Thornton and Cinda Williams, many critics singled out Bill for his excellent performance. One false move finally opened the doors of Hollywood for Bill. During the 90s, he starred in several successful films, including Tombstone, in which he played Morgan Earp, Apollo 13, in which he played Fred Hayes, and Twister, in which he played Bill Harding. However, during the 90s, Bill's most successful collaborations happened with James Cameron. He worked with Cameron on True Lies in 1994. In the film, his character was called Simon, and though he only had 10 minutes of screen time in total, he stole the entire film with his incredible performance. He worked again with Cameron in 1997 on Titanic, in which he played a treasure hunter looking for the heart of the ocean necklace. Titanic, as we all know, became the highest grossing film of its time, an achievement it held onto until 2010, and the film did a lot for Paxton's career. 
Around this time, Bill began exploring different mediums. In 97, he produced Traveler, a drama that narrated the story of a bunch of con artists. In 2001, he went back to directing and made his directorial debut with Frailty, a psychological thriller starring Matthew McConaughey. The film was well-received and gathered largely positive reviews. In 2005, he directed The Greatest Game Ever Played, a biographical sports film based on the life of golf champion Francis Ume. The film starred Shia LaBeouf and received good critical review, but had a mediocre fairing in the box office. During the early 2000s, Paxton did several films, but none of the roles were good enough to allow him to explore his acting further. Thus, in 2006, when he was offered the role of Bill Hendrickson, a Utah-based businessman and the patriarch of a fundamentalist Mormon family that believes in polygamy, in the HBO TV series Big Love, Paxton accepted the role immediately. Actresses Jennifer Goodwin, Jean Triplehorn, and Chloe Sevigny played the actors' wives in the series. The series was a huge hit, and even though Hendrickson was a difficult character to play, Paxton made him entirely believable. Big Love earned Paxton three Golden Globe nominations and millions of fans. After Big Love, Paxton delivered several successful TV shows. He played Randall McCoy in the 2012 miniseries Hatfields and McCoys, a History Channel miniseries which also starred Kevin Costner. That fetched him another Emmy nomination. Then, in 2014, he played John Garrett, the legendary villain on Marvel's Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., and in 2017, he played a rogue cop in CBS's Training Day. In early 2017, during an interview with Mark Maron, Bill shared with his fans he had contracted rheumatic fever at the age of 13, which led to a damaged heart valve. In 2017, Paxton decided to undergo open-heart surgery. For the operation, he chose Cedar sinai Medical Center in L.A., Unfortunately, 11 days after the surgery, Paxton suffered a stroke, and he passed away on February 25, 2017. Almost a year after the big love star died of complications related to his surgery, his widow Louise Paxton and two children, James and Lydia, decided to file a wrongful death lawsuit against the medical center and the surgeon who had performed the surgery. The lawsuit makes allegations of battery, negligence, and wrongful death against the hospital and the cardiovascular surgeon. It further states Paxton lost his life because the surgeon was not experienced enough to handle the surgery and that the surgery was beyond his scope of privileges. Further, it also states the surgeon used risky and unconventional surgical techniques without informing Paxton's family about them. The lawsuit was followed with a press release in which the family, through their lawyer, accused the doctor and a hundred other hospital staff members of negligence. In the release, the family claimed that when Paxton began suffering from various complications, the doctor was not in the operating room to handle them. The family further stated that even after they asked the hospital staff to notify the doctor of these complications, the surgeon did not return to the hospital and therefore his negligence and inability to provide correct treatment and continuing care are the reasons why Paxton lost his life. The lawsuit clearly states that the family was not informed about the risks involved in the surgery. USC's Center for Health Journalism looked into the lawsuit and released its report on the matter. According to this report, Paxton suffered from a bicuspid valve, and people with this condition often have aortic aneurysms, which in turn can lead to fatal ruptures. According to the report, open heart surgeries have these risks, and therefore a patient's family must be notified of them well in advance. The doctor has since resigned from the Cedar sinai Medical Center, but has remained unavailable for any comments. Only time will tell if the family is right or not in believing Paxton died of medical negligence. What's sad is that the film industry has lost an incredible actor capable of setting the screen on fire with his unique take on different roles. The Storm Chasers paid tribute to the legendary actors by spelling out the man's initials via spotter network. Jennifer Aniston paid tribute to Paxton in the 89th Academy Awards, and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. ended episode 16 of season 4 with What If. All in all, Bill Paxton will be terribly missed. What's your favorite Bill Paxton movie or show? Do you think the actor's family is right in suing the medical center? Do you think the surgeon is at fault here? Please let us know your opinion through the comments section. And if you enjoy Facts vs. videos, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to stay updated about all our latest videos.